Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Yellow Box Podcast, Season 3. We're rolling. We're, we're doing this. We've got a few episodes in, and uh, my name's Nick, and I'm joined here by my friends Tristan, who's helping produce, and Kevin. What's up, man? How are you? I'm good. You're created for more. I'm, you're, you're made with purpose f- by him for change to the world. In, in him, little, through him, by him. There you go. You're a little. For him. There you go. <laughs> yes, we are. We're created for more. Welcome to the Yellow Box Podcast. We're so glad you're here. Uh, we exist to develop creativity within the local church. If you're listening, we're so glad you're here. We hope that some of, the, some of this content is inspiring to you and equipping you to have um, some great conversations with your team and your staff um, about just how to get better. And um, I'm, I'm a big believer in that. And, you know, J- um, what's his name? The guy, Atomic Habits. Oh. Uh, James. I, I believe in James. James brother, Clear. Brother of Jesus. James Clear. Clear. Yeah. Oh, Atomic I just Habits. bought that book. Yeah. It's such a great book. But the idea is continuous improvement. Like if we just get 1% better every day or yeah. every week, then in a year we would be like 500 million percent better ish. <laughs> is, the, is that math? The uh, math. You I, understand. Uh, 1% times 365. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, like it, it gets better. That's the idea, essentially. You don't need to even buy the book. I just gave you the whole summary. Um, mm. But yes, so 1% better. And, and, and that's our hope with this podcast is that you're able to listen and ask yourself some hard questions and um, laugh either with us or at us. We're good with either. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. We're good with either. And as you may notice on this podcast, we are in person together yeah. as opposed to our normal remote viewing scenario. Um, and we were, we were all in town for an event and decided to go downtown in Houston and record in a studio space. And yep. as you can hear, there's helicopters flying over and trains, trains driving planes, by and all kinds of things. Automobiles. So, automobiles. Good old Houston. Yeah, all of good, it. Good, Heartbeat good. of America right or, here. You know, that's you either that? a plane or someone mowing their yard. Um, With a... That's, that sounds like a helicopter. A jet engine yeah. lawnmower. That's a new Great. thing. If you haven't invented that yet... Let's go. Right here. So what are we talking about today? So today, uh, today's episode, we're going to be talking about two words that are kind of popular in in pop culture, uh, especially in the political realm. But we're actually going to ask the question on the on the creative side. Are you in an echo, echo, echo chamber? Echo echo chamber. Are you in an echo chamber? Um, An echo chamber would be what what is an echo chamber? What like if, if I were to say, hey. What's an echo chamber? What would you describe it that? Well, as? I mean, it, it, you know, the only ideas you're hearing are your own or people who sound just like you. Um, the only influence you have, well, or subjected yourself to uh, are the same, the same ideas, the same. It, it's just revolving, you know, someone's saying this one thing and we're all repeating it. Yeah. Um, and, and that happens on all sides of conversations, whether that be a political conversation or a uh, debate about creativity. Uh, it's easy to really subject yourself yep. um, to fall into yeah. uh, an echo chamber. And you might not even realize it, but you sure. know, on one of the episodes we recorded earlier, we talked about how this applies to messaging when it comes to insider and outsider. And it's the same, it's the same kind of thing here. You know, or is your creative process though stuck in an echo chamber? Like one thing I noticed about creativity in the local church um, or when it comes to creativity that, that the Christians produce, whether that be TV, movies, music. Um, I do feel like we suffer sometimes from breaking out of this cycle that we're in. And it's easy to, it's easy to create things that are like, hey, man, I, I, I see this over here. I'm going to copy that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sound like that. My music's going to be like I'm going to repeat some of those phrases. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab that melody. You know, there's there's actually kind of rules against that, laws against that when you're trying to publish something. That's breaking the law. That's breaking yeah. the law. Yeah. But, you know, we, we talked about this a while back, too. Is it OK to steal mm-hmm. from other churches? Mm-hmm. And, and it's one of those it's one of those conversations that's super easy to do. I can't tell you how many times in a we want to stop the steal. Oh, geez. oh, stop this. <laughs> okay, can I not say that? Okay, my yeah. bad. Yeah. Oh, wow. And creatively speaking. Creatively, creatively speaking. speaking. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Oh, that God, was I good. can't bring myself to say that <laughs> phrase. I can't do it. <laughs> but yes, I mean, think so I can't tell you how many times we've been doing a branding project and we're like, show us brands that you like. 
Right. And without fail, everybody sends the same examples. Yeah, and, and we're not going to name the churches, but no. I, I, I do want to confess my echo chamber. Can I do that? Yeah. I, I, this is me, and I've been privileged to lead worship for a number of years, and my echo chamber, and, I, and this is what I realize about me, is, was, and is, uh, yeah. you know, it's kind of the Hillsong, Bethel, Elevation Lane. So yeah. like, like if there was like three lanes of a highway, I'm probably within one of those three lanes. Mm -hmm. And then I might pull in some Map City or Belonging Co. or some other stuff. So I'm open to some of those other things, but that's typically my lane. And that's essentially my echo chamber. So then I remember 10, 15 years ago, like endeavoring to write songs and every song, <laughs> my inspiration for that song was off of the latest Hillsong United album or, or whatever. And I'm like, well, we're, you know, and we're good because we're doing those songs in church and they're flying. So I'm like, well, what if it's kind of sounded kind of like that, but you know, in a different well, key. And you know what? Yeah. I've been, in, I've been inspired with a new soundtrack for yellow box. You guys ready? What is it? Cause we were all yellow. Is that it? Does that work? Is that original? Is that? I no? love it. <laughs> new intro, Coldplay. new outro. We can now, are all yellow. Well, I mean, yeah, but think about that's, that's, the, that's the thing. That's yeah. that, that's the, it, we, we roll into that. I mean, Hillsong kind of sounds like Coldplay, right? Like you, we, we have these things that inspire us. And it's or U2, like, you know, everybody went through the U2. Oh the, my gosh. The, the U2 delay, oh, yeah. the famous U2 delay was used probably for the last 15, 20 Eighth years. Eighth notes and quarter notes stacked on each other. Oh yeah, every oh, yeah. opening song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, we do it in worship. Let me give you some examples that I've seen in the creative, in the design space, uh, geometric shapes. Yeah. I felt like we went through a, a space where geometric shapes were just being used a lot. Uh, gradients right now. Yeah, I feel like maybe we're coming to the end of that, but everybody's like, man, if it's gradient, it's it's so cool. So clean. Teal and orange. Teal and orange for yeah. video. Uh, okay. That lasted probably like six years and about five years too long. <laughs> so the idea is not we're that busy. we're... Busy we're, design. The idea, though, is not that those things are bad. I'm not saying that they're bad because it, because they it may be cool no, to no, use no. the them. colors teal and orange. They're actually horrible. I was kidding. They're not. <laughs> but I do want to ask the question: like, what churches are you finding inspiration from? Which I think it's okay to find inspiration from other churches. Amen to that. Sure. The the other questions I have that we should also be asked is: where else might you be finding inspiration? Um. And where could we go to find inspiration outside of just the church world to just help us kind of break out a little bit? So, Kevin, you want to speak to that? Because, yeah, absolutely. You're awesome. I mean, we know well, we, we um, from a design perspective with our team, we try heavily to avoid creatives whose only experience only experience is is within the, the local church alone. And part of that is because process is sometimes very cloudy and muddy in that mm -hmm. circle and so if they've only learned how to do creative in a, in a in a church and odds are they probably didn't have a healthy creative process in that church that's one of the biggest struggles that the church has um they're not really going to be a good adaptation to work with an agency like a team level um uh, another another example maybe uh, of what that struggle the struggle looks like sometimes is um if my inspiration and my style is very one dimensional and I'm only, and I'm literally in an echo chamber of one type of style that I, that I produce because it's right. the easiest thing to do for me. It's the quickest thing to do for me. Right. Um, it's where I kind of default to, um, then I've also kind of put myself into a box. Like I'm really good at doing this thing. I'm really mm -hmm. good at doing this style. That's not really going to work all the time. Right. Um, and so I think that the, the danger comes with not being willing to, to look out beyond yourself. It's okay to draw inspiration outside of the church. It's okay to look, look at what top designers in the world are doing. If you don't know some of the top agencies in the world, like look it up, top branding agencies in the world. There are some that have offices on every continent and they're producing yeah. some of the craziest things. It's, you, you should be in the know of what those stories are, who these people are, uh, what projects they're working on, how they're pushing creativity. And not because that's going to set the standard, because I, I believe like if you're creative and you're in the local church and you're in touch with the creator, right. like you should be able to excel. You should be able to push the envelope and create your own. So you don't, you, you shouldn't just go out there and be like, man, I'm going to look what I, I can't. Th what, sorry if this offends anybody, uh -oh. but like, uh oh, I got so tired of seeing people dress like they're in 
a Sunday service service with Kanye for their Easter performances. Everybody's wearing beige and wearing like what are you like, wearing right now? I, I'm wearing beige from my I mean <laughs> two yeah, tones. Okay. Two tones. But but like, you know, I'm not in a jumpsuit <laughs> that I like somehow like bleached into like oblivion as a beige yeah, outfit. Sure. But I, I got so tired. It's like I I saw that on all these people's Easter services, I immediately knew what their inspiration was. Yep. Mm -hmm. They all had the same inspiration. Yep. And someone thought, yeah, this is a great idea. But my question to that would be, who was at the table that was like, wait a minute, like what can we do that's original? Yeah. And why why wasn't either their voice heard or they didn't feel the freedom to speak up? And so I think right. that there's a piece of that that's like, guys, let's push the envelope where we can. Yeah. Um, if your only inspiration is, man, I saw this and I'm going to do this uh, because, you know, you know, a lot of times you are looking at someone else's production. You're looking at someone else's accomplishment. So I'm going to look at this person's brand or their creative through the lens of what I perceive that they've accomplished. Yeah. And if they've accomplished or great produced. things or produced, yeah. if they've accomplished or produced great things, I'm automatically going to judge their creative if through a different lens. Yeah. And so, and, and by doing so, I'm also demeaning any originality of my creative 100%. because I'm, I'm not at that prestigious level maybe, or I'm not, I haven't produced that yet. Yeah. And so that doesn't mean you're wrong. If you're a creative and your, your work is being judged against someone who's super accomplished, right? If you're, if you're, if they're going to judge Kanye's album artwork to your series design every time, like he could put whatever the heck he wants on an album cover. And because he's Kanye, people would be like, yeah, this is dope, man. This is the, this is the craziest thing <laughs> I've <laughs> ever seen. I don't know why I'm like from California all of a sudden, but this, this is so dope. And like, it, but it's, it's not, it could be the trashiest design ever. Right. But it becomes, it is put through that filter. So my challenge to you is open up your horizons a little bit with your creative inspiration. Think outside the yep. box. Think outside of what you're familiar with. Step out of your echo chamber. What can create an echo chamber is looking at accomplishments and production more so than focusing on process and the people that you're doing creative with. So we always talk about the three P's, people, process, and products, right? We Products is what we're producing as, as people. So healthy people, healthy creative process, great products. Mm -hmm. When we, where we find ourselves in an echo chamber is when we just look at the final product that other people are doing, having no idea what the creative process was that they went through and having really, I mean, maybe you might know who, what their heart is or where they're at, but here's my thing. We, let's not forsake the hard work of getting outside of the echo chamber. Let's not forsake the hard work of getting into the number one place that we should be finding inspiration to me, which is the Bible. The, to me, the Bible and, and how you hear from God. So do you hear from God? I, one of the ways that I hear from God is by reading the Bible. One of the ways that I connect with God is by being in nature. So like two things you can do on the daily for me, again, get in the word, get outside, get around nature, be mm -hmm. inspired. So find inspiration that's not something that man produced, right? So find inspiration outside of other people's process to get to the product. So take your eyes off of the products around you and start focusing more on your own process, your own journey of finding inspiration creatively. And, um, and, and that will, I think, help get you out of the echo chamber of feeling like we're in a rat race. We need to break, yeah. break the, mm -hmm. break people out. Like there's a door out of the echo chamber and I think it's different for everybody yeah. um, on what that is. I mean, Kevin, you and I both are musical, so sometimes it may just be picking up a guitar um, yeah, or, what's, or what's piano gonna, yeah, and just take your mind off of it. For begin to just create, like just pick a key and go. And, and, and it may be a hobby. It may be a hobby. Like do something completely out of the box. We are yellow box mm. to just get to help get you out of the echo chamber and get your juices flowing creatively. Yeah. And I would also say, like, <clears throat> I think that sometimes we look at inspiration and we look at things that inspire us and we say, Oh, I want to create that. I want to create something like that. But I think the goal with inspiration shouldn't be to replicate, if you will. I think it should be to take the feelings that you had when you saw whatever yeah. it was that inspired you and, and recreate those feelings. Mm. Don't recreate the product 
or you know the video, the photo, the design. Don't recreate that. Recreate the feelings that you had and give that to somebody else with your own whatever it is that you put on it. Mm -hmm. And so it's not, I, oh, I love the teal and orange look. It should be, okay, I really, really like the way that teal and orange contrast each other. I really, really like the way that that made me feel when I watched it. How can I do that in my own lane? And I think that's when we become more original than like just stealing stuff. Right. And, so. and I mean, look, it's natural to be inspired and want to replicate things. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a natural thing. Like, hey, man, I want to dress like that. I like the way that right. looks. But we all know, like, if, if I see the way someone looks in a certain outfit and I try to try that on, it may not look right on me. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it doesn't work. It, you, you need to know, like, what what works for you and what doesn't. What, mm -hmm. How do I make this us? How do I pull this in? And, and I think sometimes we're, we're super ADD with our creative in that way. It's like we yeah. uh, just pick pieces from here and here and here, and it mm -hmm. just feels completely lost and discombobulated on the journey. Like, you're just yeah. all over the place. And it's also very exhausting from a creative mm -hmm. standpoint. Like, who are we? Yeah. Right. Our yeah. social looks like, like it's drunk. Yeah. yeah. You know, like is it guy, sure. our, our social feed is, is the whack. Yeah. I want to dive in for just a moment as we kind of wrap this up to just dive into kind of the area of design. So when it comes to, to being in an echo chamber or feeling like we're in a rut creatively, there are some things that you can do to kind of freshen up your look and maybe get yourself outside of what you're, you've always done. So it may be that your church never does series and maybe you need to start doing series. It might be that your church has never taken the approach of what we, we may call a season. So developing a look and feel for a three month period I'm, as an example. So it's like, hey, let's pretend your church is Velocity Church. Spring at Velocity Church and it has its own look and feel and vibe and you're developing something creatively for spring at Velocity Church. That might be a thing that you do just to freshen up and get your church out of kind of the echo chamber, out of that rut. Um, it could be a campaign. It could be a campaign that you run. Uh, an example that, that we talked about recently was um, Try Church Again. What would it look like to run a campaign in your area, in your community called Try Church Again and inviting people back to church? And it's a campaign. Um, and Or let's go big or go home, right? It might mean you rename your church. It mm. might mean that you rebrand your church, that you give your church, and, and, and with that might come new messaging, fresh vision, DNA, and all of those things. So, so talk a little bit about like how do you approach what you what you think you might need or not need for this for the moment that you're in as a church well i think it goes into getting aligned first off as a leadership team right like where do we see ourselves going in 10 20 years like what where is this actually going um that looks different from a church launch versus an established church that has a property maybe that has you know, multiple services that has a growing staff, like the, the vision that got you here, if you don't expand it and grow it, wow. right. It's going to keep you there. Like you're still yeah. operating mm -hmm. like you're here. Right. And so that in itself becomes an echo chamber because now my, my vision is this like, well, what do we exist for? We just repeat it back to ourselves. Right. Right. Instead of actually believing it or actually meaning something. And so sometimes as you grow as an organization, those things have to grow with you. Those things yeah. have to adapt and change. And you have to be willing to, to see beyond the chamber, to right. see beyond the curve that you're on right now. Right. And so from a, a messaging standpoint, from a branding standpoint, from like Nick said, a, a naming standpoint, maybe, maybe the name that you started with that happens to have like 17 words in it isn't that's the best thing I, I always try to find out how many the longest church uh, the longest name. church yeah. names <laughs> we're, um, we're taking submissions we're taking some yeah. DMs. yes please DMs. please <laughs> it like brings joy because i'm like man this is so I'm, i i actually respect it because i'm like that's a lot like you got to have an acronym just to i like it when churches have like a 10 letter acronym oh yeah oh yeah that's the best no, I'm, well like um I, you know i have family that grew up uh Methodist and it's a big it's it's super great like loving denomination um really have a lot of longevity um so don't take this wrong but they always did acronyms for everything and they thought it's like so like they had a program that was for like after you have they, have, they practice confirmation so it's mm -hmm. like you you go through this process of confirming your belief in Jesus and so then they have a camp like experience and it's called I'm saved now on with life but the acronym was is now <sighs> And so it's like, you know, it's like, yeah, that make that that that's 
but it's a very insider speech. But like, yeah. that's the thing. It's like that in and of itself becomes a little bit of an echo chamber. Why don't we change that? Yeah. Well, that's what we've always done. So that's the greatest last words of everybody. Yeah. Like we, we've yeah. always done it this way. Well, is it where we're going? And yeah. I think that honestly, the church is going to have to, the church as a whole is really going to have to ask itself some of those key questions yep. because, um, you can push back, you can fight this, you can fight that, you can, you can, you know, fight on this front line of politics, you can fight on that front line of culture, you can front, you can fight all these battles and lose who you are and forget what you exist for. And that's, wow. and I kind of feel like that's where we're at a lot of times as the church is we're, yeah. we're, we're fighting on all these fronts and man, why are we here? Yeah. At the end of the day, why am I here? And so the echo chamber of your life, the echo chamber of your organization goes far beyond mm -hmm. the creative into the missional. And so if you really want to take yourself as an organization out of the echo chamber, it's a great place to start by asking those key questions internally. Yeah. If I were to rename this podcast, cause I think we're going to call it echo chamber, but here's an alternative. It would be, is your creative prophetic mm -hmm. and, and being prophetic. I'm talking about is your, is your creative speaking to the now mm. moment? What is most important right now? Where are we? Where are we going? What is needed right now? Listen, we can lead worship as a worship leader. I can lead worship every, every week with the same songs, or we can do three services back to back to back. Every service feels different because we're kind of in the room and God and Holy Spirit's ministering, and we have to be aware of what's happening. And sometimes we'll do a certain bridge a little bit longer, and right. sometimes we'll, do it, we'll hang on a chorus, or sometimes we'll do a different transition here or there or wherever, and it's because we're reading the room. Your creative needs to read your room. Your creative mm. needs to read your audience. Mm, that's good. And, that's good. and that's, that is what's going to help get us out of the echo chamber. Because what got you here may not necessarily be the thing that's going to get you there, which is where mm. God wants to take you and your church. We're Yellow Box. This is Kevin. I'm Nick. That's Tristan. So glad you guys joined us today. Take this to your team. Ask the, ask the hard questions. Let us know how it goes. We're praying for you. God bless. We'll see you next time. Oh,